Hi everyone, this is Giacomo Vacari again, and I'm here to um, show you the third video of uh, my uh, Dooms weapon ex code example. So I remade uh, all the uh, weapons and most of the mods from Doom 2016 into a real engine by reverse engineering their behavior, since the code is not available. And I'm going to show you how uh, the mods work, uh, even though there's a lot of edge cases, so of course I'm not going to go through everything. But uh, that's uh, also not the purpose of this video. It's just the purpose of this video is just to go a little bit over how I did it. And of course, the mods are part of the weapons. So you want to be able to have a weapon here. So for example, let's say we have the shotgun. Right now we have no mod equipped. Let's say we get the triple shot mod. We activate the mod weapon. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Uh, yeah, I'm showing the traces now. Doesn't really matter. Or we can go to the grenade launcher, wait for the charge, etc. etc. Right? So, of course, the mods are going to be a child actor component of the weapon. And from there, we're going to do a lot of stuff. So, basically, when the weapon appears, we are, well, the uh, player requests a change, the weapon appears. As soon as the weapon appears, we're going to decide what. Um, what mod should be set up there and uh, then we're gonna start with our logic so um, this is the base of the uh, mod and then each child has their own logic uh, most of the cases because uh, it's quite specific uh, there's no mods that repeat behavior really they are all quite orthogonally differentiated so what we do here is um, just a few different things when we appear and we, when a weapon appears and we have the uh so basically when this happens uh from the weapon we saw the other day that you go into shooting mode automatically this is to keep the combat more fluid but the same should happen with the mods so if i'm in uh mod mode i go to the heavy rifle i come back then i should go into mod mode same happens when the mode uh, finishes shooting some of them go back some of them don't so it just keeps combat more fluid. So that's like the first thing that we're gonna check for. We also have like diff uh, several states. So like uh, usually it's like a field of view change and also like uh, we have a charge timeline uh, in most of them. So we are gonna need functions to deal with those um, states. Actually, this should probably be done in a different way uh, if you wanted to do like the whole thing uh, more properly if you had more time to do this as in proper development you would want to have def different um, uh, timers or timelines uh, depending how you want to do it uh, probably in the game state or the game instance something like that because you're gonna need at least two timelines per mod uh, in this case I wanted to simplify and just have two timelines for all the mods so of course some problems are gonna happen so for example as soon as you change the mod the timeline is gonna like change and reset and it's not going to remember the last one so you know that's not how it's done in doom but of course i don't have the resources at home uh, while moonlighting to um to do that so that's one thing that i um, missed in uh, in the development of this uh, code example but you know it's something that could be done it just takes a lot of time so anyway of course we need to uh check for several things before using the actual uh, mods so for example, uh, the damage to do from the mod will be different. Usually in most cases from the damage done by the normal weapon usage. So of course we need to calculate that. Uh, we need to tell the UI what we're doing. So for example, in some cases we're gonna have like a, a scope. Um, oh yeah, of course, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, heavy rifle scope, boom. We're gonna have a little bit of a different UI. So, you know, we need to deal with that and then of course uh, you know just like things like knowing if the uh, mod button is down etc etc but as you can see the base class is extremely simple it could maybe even be simplified a little bit more uh, by using uh, a key structure instead of a variable here but you know well that's not really that important in this case uh, legibility is probably more important than actually saving one variable um, so yeah let's look into the actual mods Let's say, for example, uh, the simplest one would definitely be the rocket detonate because it's just get the latest uh, 
Fire Rocket, or all of them as well. Uh, you could do, uh, I don't remember which one. So you just shoot it, as soon as you press the mod button, it fires. And yeah, actually in Doom they do that. Uh, they get all of them. So if there's more than one in the air, they all explode. Which was, I thought it was interesting because in other projects I've done, um, you can take the order in which they are being shot and then shoot them in order, but they didn't even care to do that. So, uh, you know, that's I, how I repeated it. That's the easiest one. You just get it and you just call in the projectile, hey, detonate, do your thing. Uh, so, for example, um, the heavy rifle scope is a quite interesting one, I would say. It's one of uh, the most complex ones. So the reason why it's complex is because um, you have, it should be pretty simple in principle, but it really isn't because here we go. So we have the same thing as the normal rifle, which is the first shot as a normal trace and then subsequent shots have variants. But in this case, what they're doing is uh, rotate the controller. But when you let go, you go back to the initial point. You'll do R interpolate, rotation interpolate back. So, you know, it's uh, just took a while to figure out what they were doing there. So that's uh, what's happening over here. You know, return the original crosshair rotation smoothly after recall. Do the actual recall, set the scope, all of that. Just set up the initial things. Uh, so it's like an intermediate uh, difficulty. Um, or complexity mode but as you can see it's just like one variable like and one function it's really not that complicated i think there's one timeline here no no actually there isn't so as you can see it's pretty simple uh there's some more interesting ones so for, um so the ghost gun is definitely the most difficult the most complicated one and the rotator uh the double shotgun is quite interesting it seems very simple because what the double shotgun does is uh, it actually yeah, it's this one is installed by default. So what it does is just shoots a normal shot twice, and then it takes time to reload, uh, which seems simple enough. But what you could do is you can do the two shots, cancel to another weapon, come back. So as you can see, that is uh, very very. Yeah, I know the double shotgun has an error. Um, it's just something very very simple. It's just. Uh, simple as this really to solve I guess I just never caught it before boom, boom, boom. it's just this let's make it a little bit cleaner like this oh that's the wrong button so this one uh, oh I don't I guess I don't have it in this uh, keyboard because this keyboard is Spanish I'm used to working on the Icelandic keyboard anyway this will solve the uh, the problem so uh yeah so what you need to do for that is of course you need to check if you are gonna have enough ammo to do this double shot um and then you need to remember um oh ha i actually broke something by doing uh what i did before in the double shotgun that's interesting double shotgun yeah i just changed it so quickly that i didn't oh yeah because uh, boom, boom, boom. well I don't know, I'll have to think about it later, but it should be a very simple change probably. It's just something I forgot somewhere, some validity check. So, um, yeah, here. So you need to remember like your last, uh, how many shots out of those two you did and reset it when you come back up or when you change uh, weapons, you know, so that's a little trick here. A uh, little trick that I use several times for like weapons that do like a normal shot uh, as a mod. So for example, the triple shotgun, it's really just three normal shots in succession. So what you do is you actually overwrite. This is going to be a bit Let's clean it up. So what you do is you actually do the main fire, but you have to overwrite several variables. Uh, the way I do that, for example, in the triple shotgun, is actually done with a timeline you could do it other ways i guess but you know two shots we overwrite we shoot overwrite again and then we reset the states 
and so and allow to go back into mod so, mod mode if the weapon if the button is fin is down uh, when the thing is done. So this is basically how most of them work. Really, there's uh, just little details here and there. The ghost cannon, of course, has a lot of little details. Uh, it's the most complicated weapon in the game for sure to replicate. So you know, like check ammo, set the FOV and scope mask, blah blah. Uh, charge timeline, uh, restart. Yeah, restart the mod if the button is done after you fire. But as you can see, the fire gets much more complicated. Uh, for re many reasons, so for example, like you will change the player's speed while you are in siege mode. Um, also, you will change um, the amount of ammo that is needed by the mod, things like that. You know, and like of course the uh, capsule and the damage are very different, things like that. So you know, you basically just have to override every single thing um, from the actual normal weapon. So apply the inertia of the of the uh, gas cannon things like that but as you can see once you know how it's done you just like make it quite easily of course check if you have enough ammo so basically the complexity here is that it overrides almost everything from the weapon so you're basically making a new weapon uh, but because it's very well encapsulated and like um, inherited from the weapon it's actually quite simple you just copy and paste and change whatever things need to be changed so it doesn't get that complicated. Uh, the chain gun has a interesting thing. So the chain gun has like this rotational thing and like um, and the speed accelerates and all of that. <clears throat> but of course, with the mod, you keep the acceleration always up. So you just shoot immediately at maximum speed. So that's a little bit interesting. Not so much as as the loop as the uh, mod itself, because basically what it's saying is is like keep me rotating and stop rotating and stuff like that but because in the actual um, chain gun itself you have to rotate it and like the first shots are not as fast as the normal so like most of the shots will be done at the speed that the weapon is uh, set out in here in the data table but not the first shots and I wish that I had figured out how to do that, that dynamically uh, multiplying it by like some kind of variable but I really wasn't. Um, I'm sure there's a way. I thought of a few different ways, but like it's just not really efficient to do it like that uh, at the time being. Uh, so what I did is just like get some events <coughs> from the timeline, and um, as the timeline starts rotation, so this is the rotation, the ramp up of the rotation, because the loop is somewhere else, and this event starts shooting faster and faster and then once that's finished it will go into the actual loop we will do the normal shootings i set up once this is finished i set up the auto mode for firing i play the anim loop and then it starts looping and it starts shooting it's not the most elegant of solutions but it works you know so uh, and it ramps up and down just as in the game so you know that works but yeah that's probably like one of the weirdest things in the game and yeah uh, there's of course a little bit meat, more meat to this, but uh, if you have access to the code, I'm happy to. Uh, I'm sure you will be able to see all the details and understand quite easily. I mean, it's all very like simple code. This is the uh, um, homing uh, rocket launcher, so it's quite simple. Um, homing prints the mod. You get an enemy, you lock, and you go that way. And you reset the targeting and stuff like that you know like you don't let it go once uh, you obviously set all the reference to null and all that stuff so you know uh, relatively simple but you have to figure it out uh, by reverse engineering the game how exactly they do it then replicate it in code so i'm sure you will find the code interesting if you get to uh, take a look at it again uh, this is just a code example to show a little bit of the skills that i've been learning uh, in terms of uh, combat design and weapon design i've designed over 40 kind of weapons in the last year at work so i wanted to tackle this uh this challenge because i think these weapons are awesome and yeah basically go uh, crazy check out the code uh, if you have the password and uh, let me know what you think uh, i would love to hear any feedback and again thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed this uh these three videos take care